This is the all-new Ford Figo Automatic. It's a car which promises stylish looks on the outside, a roomy cabin as well as an engaging drive. But the big question is that is this the best driver's car in the premium hatchback space? Well, we decided to take along the VW Polo GT TSI with us to find out. Well, so here I am now inside the Figo Automatic and in terms of practicality, it's a pretty good place to be in. You get uh, two big uh, bottle holders in the doorbins where you can generally have those big bottles. There's also a couple of, uh, in fact, three of them over here in uh, the central uh, console. And it's also got a phone dock where you can, of course, keep your cell phone. And if you are navigating through the city using Google Maps, then you can, of course, directly access them from here. So uh, visibility is not uh, impaired at all. Well, so if you are someone who's got the latest version of the iPhone, then this is the car to be in because you can, of course, show off that phone by keeping it here without really showing it off. You know what I mean. Well, the seating inside the Figo is pretty comfortable and uh, the support for the lower back also is uh, pretty good. And the squab is uh, both wide as well as long, which means that even taller passengers should not have a problem in this car over those long trips. The only issue is that the steering wheel adjusts uh, only for uh, rake and not for reach, unlike the Polo, which adjusts uh, both ways. And that means that uh, finding a comfortable driving position in this car can uh, take a little longer than on the Polo. Well, the quality of materials inside the Figo is pretty impressive and at par with uh, most other rivals. But when you compare with the Polo, it is slightly behind and it lacks that uh, solid build to last feel that the Polo exudes. So slightly behind in that sense. Well, so here I'm inside the Polo GT TSI and this car is by far the best car. The Polo really is the best car in the hatchback segment for sheer build quality and trumps not only the Figo in this comparison today, but all its rivals in the hatchback space. It really is that good. But what is so good about the Polo's interior? Everything really does feel solidly put together. And even the lower end of the dashboard, uh, which is an area where a lot of uh, manufacturers put cheap plastics. Well, VW hasn't done that. They really have bolted it very solidly and used high-grade plastics over there as well. And really does have a sense of uh, quality and classiness about itself. Well, in terms of seat comfort, it is neck and neck between the Figo as well as the Polo. Both these cars offer you very good uh, under thigh support as well as support for your lower back. In terms of practicality, the Figo is slightly better than the Polo. But that said, you don't really need more place than uh, five bottle holders in the front seats, do you? The Polo gets uh, big bottle uh, holders in the door bins. You also get two bottle holders right ahead of the gear lever. And there's one right behind it where you can keep uh, that bottle for the rear occupants. So in that sense, it is pretty good. Where the Polo does excel over the Figo is the fact that the steering wheel adjusts both for rake as well as for reach. And that makes it a much more easier place to find a comfortable driving position than the one inside the Figo. So who wins the battle of the front seats? Well, undoubtedly, it is the VW Polo GT TSI with its sheer quality, which wins it over the Figo. Well, so here I'm in the back seat of the Ford Figo. And as you can see, headroom is uh, more than adequate. And the knee room is pretty generous as well. What Ford have done is a very intelligent thing. They have raised the front seats. And what that means is that there is place below them where I can stretch my feet. And that really does add to the sense of space as well as comfort in the back seat. Well, the seats inside the Figo offer good cushioning. The backrest angle is pretty good. But unfortunately, even though Ford have provided uh, seven places to keep your uh, bottles in the front, there's absolutely no place in the door bins over here to keep them. So in that sense, it's a bit of a letdown. Well, so here I'm inside the back seat of the VW Polo GT TSI and headroom is just about decent. The room is adequate as well, but it isn't as roomy as the Ford Figo. Also a minus inside this car is the fact that the tunnel over here is really huge. And what that means is that whoever's going to sit here will have to really fight it out with the other occupants for sheer legroom. So a pretty decent place in isolation, but not as good as the Ford Figo. So who wins the battle of the back seat? It is undoubtedly the Figo with its spacious rear seats. Well, the first thing that truly impresses you as soon as you start off the uh, Polo TSI is the fact that this engine is an inherently quiet motor. If you've just stepped out of the Figo and are getting into the Polo, then this car will really feel absolutely quiet and very silent compared to the Figo. And uh, in fact, it is so quiet and so silent that even when the engine is on, you might accidentally turn the ignition key on again, twisting it around, thinking that the engine is switched off. This car by far is the best hatchback in the country for keen drivers. And why is that? 
Well, that's uh, largely because it comes with a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox, which is uh, a very crisp and a very slick unit. Why this gearbox really excels is in the fact that uh, gear changes are absolutely unnoticeable. It's a very seamless gearbox. It's a very smooth gearbox, and you won't really notice too many gear shifts happening uh, unless and until, of course, you really do smash the accelerator pedal down. And when you do that, then uh, performance as well as uh, acceleration is really very brisk. And with the seven speeds to choose from, flexibility of this engine is really very good. And when you are doing speeds in excess of 100, 110 kph on the highway, the engine is spinning at a relatively low 2000 RPM, uh, which also makes the cabin a very calm and quiet place to be in. Well, this car comes with a 1.2 liter uh, turbocharged petrol engine, and that engine develops about 102 bhp of uh, power, which is very good considering its compact uh, size or relative compact size uh, for that matter. Well, where this car also excels is in the dynamic department and the steering wheel is uh, very feelsome, it's really very crisp and even though in the city it is pretty light uh, when you are maneuvering it around uh, town traffic and for uh, finding that tight parking spot, well when you take it out on the highway the steering wheel seems to add a lot more weight to it and doesn't seem as light as it was in the city and that along with the fact that uh, the tyres out there are very grippy makes uh, pushing this car into every corner a very joyful affair. Well, the dynamic chassis, the very well set up suspension and this sharp steering wheel means that uh, this car really does change direction like a housefly. So if you are someone who enjoys uh, pushing his car into corners when you are on a hilly section, then the Polo GTTSI is one of the best cars to do it in. In fact, uh, the GTTSI is the best small car to do that in. Well, in terms of dynamic ability as well as handling, the Polo definitely feels better than the uh, Figo. The Figo is a little slow to uh, react both in terms of uh, steering input as well as the engine responsiveness. And in that sense, uh, the Polo is definitely the better car for keener drivers out there. Well, so here I am driving the Ford Figo Automatic. Now this car, of course, comes with a 1.5 litre petrol engine, which develops about 110 bhp of power. And on paper, it seems to be a much more powerful engine and a much more powerful car when compared to the VW Polo, but uh, in terms of outright performance and outright uh, acceleration, both cars are very similar. And uh, where the Polo, of course, excels over the Figo is in the refinement department. This engine does feel a little uh, louder when you're, of course, uh, starting it from cold and also when you are revving it hard. But that, of course, is uh, only when you are comparing it with the Polo. In isolation, the Ford Figo in itself is a very good product and a very smooth as well as refined motor on its own. Figo's gearbox is pretty good, the uh, gear shifts are uh, more or less jerk free, there's a little bit of uh, lag when you are shifting gears manually. Well, unlike the Polo which comes with a 7-speed uh, dual clutch automatic, this one comes with a 6-speed uh, automatic and uh, it's not as slick or as quick or as efficient as the one on the Polo. Another area where this car uh, falls slightly behind the Polo is uh, the fact that the refinement levels aren't as good, even though in isolation the Figo is very good. Against the Polo, it is slightly behind, ever so slightly behind, when you do, of course, uh, smash the accelerator pedal down to uh, get maximum from this engine and want that brisk acceleration maneuver then uh, there's a lot of noise and it doesn't feel as sporty or as uh, welcoming as the one on the Polo does. Well, one department where the Figo definitely feels a lot better than the more expensive Polo is in the ride department. This car really does have a very cushiony and a very comforting ride, especially at slow city speeds where the Polo tends to crash around uh, on pothole roads. This one really does soak in those bumps very well. And on the highway, this car really does sit very flat and offers you a very confidence-inspiring ride. In fact, on the highway, the Figo feels a lot more stable in terms of high-speed manners as well as stability and this is the car that uh, you will prefer over the Polo. Even though the Polo is a good car, this one feels that much better when you are doing 3 digit speeds on the highway. Well, just like the Polo, the uh, Figo also has a very light steering wheel which means that uh, parking in the city is a breeze but of course on the highway there's a lot of weight which tends to add up into the steering wheel which uh, adds to the feeling of uh, stability as well as confidence inside uh, this car. <laughs> Well, so in the overall analysis, it really is the Polo TSI which comes across as the best driver's hatchback in India. It offers you a creamy engine, a crisp gearbox and very agile handling. If you are someone who really does seek the thrill of driving and money is no object for you, then this is the best driver's hatchback in the country. Well, but that said, the Figo Automatic does manage to do 90% of what the Polo can at roughly about 80% of the price. And that alone makes this car the winner of this comparison today.